Warning. Before attempting any recommendation herein, at all times follow all safety instructions provided by the manufacturer. Contact the manufacturer if in doubt. Obtain assistance from a qualified professional. Use the recommendations herein at your own risk with no guarantees whatsoever. Warning. Altering a product may avoid the product's warranty, prevent the product from being returned to the vendor or manufacturer, adversely affect the product's suitability in regard to its intended use, render the product unsafe resulting in injury during or after the alteration. Um, I'm here today to show you uh, some of the modifications I've done to my uh, General International drill press. This drill press uh, you can see here on my right. It's, uh, it's a little bit unique. It has a six inch quill depth. So for those projects where you've got to get all the way down, uh, it's quite good for doing those types of uh, projects. Um, it's uh, pretty sturdily built and uh, you know, solid cast iron. So can't go wrong with that. All right, so to show you a little bit, I'll tell you a little bit about what uh, what I've done here. Yeah, um, for for those of you who uh, have used quill locks uh, on a drill press, uh, possibly in the past, um, quill lock is is quite an invaluable thing to have. Um, when you're doing work, what I find is especially when setting my work up, I like to bring my uh, my bit down right onto the work right where I want to have it set up, and um, I kind of kind of play around with it a little bit and just make sure it's right where I want it. Lock the quill into position, and then I can set my uh, my fence and my stop right against the work, and now I can repeat my holes uh, how, however many times I want to. So uh, we'll get to that demonstration in a bit because I have a few other things to show you before I can uh, I'll show you how that works. But essentially, uh, the quill lock here is basically just a uh, a split design. So two pieces of wood here. Actually, well, there's how many pieces all together here? We've got six actually, and. Uh, a piece of, uh, I believe this is Teflon or nylon, most likely it's nylon. Um, they're all just basically clamped together and it clamps around the column. Um, and then you've got the piece that's uh, been reamed out that uh, accommodates the quill. And essentially, it's just a, a locking nut. So as I uh, put some tension on it, the quill's going to stay relatively in place. There's going to be a little bit of play, but uh, once you get it all the way down where you want it to, say you want to hold it in this position here, you just tighten it up. And then you've essentially got your quill where you want it. Loosen it off and you can have it come right back up again. So that's the first thing. The next thing I wanted to show you. The nice thing with this uh, drill press is it uh, has a quite a generous table. Uh, but uh, what I found was especially doing uh, woodwork and that sort of thing. Having an extended table like this is quite handy. So you can see what I've done here. Essentially, just a piece of three-quarter inch MDF. I've cut it to, to accommodate the, uh, the crank for the table, and uh, accommodated uh, here for the uh, column. And basically, the holes are at uh, preset distances, just sort of on a grid. And these are just quarter-inch uh, T nuts. So, for holding down jigs and fixtures, it's uh, it's quite handy for that. Basically, the table just goes on like this. And of course, uh, your setup would be a little bit different than mine, but uh, essentially, there are four places to secure this uh, extension table. So just drop those guys through like that. And uh, within just a few minutes, you've got yourself a really, really nice flat extension for your table. And the hole in the center has been of course drilled out to accommodate uh, various things, one of which being uh, when you're doing uh, chuck changes. What I like to do is um, for this uh, particular drill I'll, uh, I'll get a piece of uh, PEX pipe up through the center here, just uh, from the bottom working its way up through the center and uh, getting the chuck in place and then I just give it a few taps to, to seat it home. It's an MT3. So, that being said, now we just have to attach all these fasteners, and then we'll be off to the races. Now, for those of you out there who uh, like to take a, little, a few shortcuts, 
uh, I'd recommend uh, just getting a, a drill and you can uh, you can speed fasten these fasteners to your liking and then just snug them home by hand uh, but since my drills inside my hand drills inside I'm just going to go ahead and do this manually The other thing I did for this drill press was, uh, Leah, if you want to show them, just uh, pan down and you can see the bottom there. Just tilt it down so they can see the bottom of uh, the base there. Just move it around so you see the movable base. So this uh, drill press is actually on a movable base. You can move it up a bit, Leah, just to kind of give them a, a bit of a better view. Just move it up here. Just stand up. It's okay. So you can see how there's uh, a movable base, which is quite handy if you want to relocate your drill press throughout parts of your shop. Um, it's not as rigid. I, I have to say that, of course, if your base is clamped securely to the floor, bolted down, then uh, of course you're going to have a much more rigid setup than I do. But that being said, um, the trade-off, of course, is rigidity versus mobility. And in my case, because I have a lot of stuff in my garage, I prefer mobility. Okay, yeah. So here we have it. It's more or less snug down. Quite a nice surface to work with. Now, this is where we kick it up a notch. We've got this piece here, which is essentially is a fence. And those pre drill holes I was telling you about, the nice thing with those is you take your quarter inch. Essentially now you've got a nice way to clamp your fence to the table in various positions as you wish. So with just a few quick turns, I can reposition my fence to accommodate various pieces of work. And with the holes, the nice thing again, I, I just can't say enough about this grid thing, um, you know, pretty much position your fence where you want it. If you don't like it where it is, take these two out and then just reposition it, put them in the other holes and away you go. So we're going to do a little demo. So we got our piece of scrap wood. Again, I'm going to bring it down. Let's say this this hole here is my starter hole. I just, you know, I piloted it and I want my hole to go there. So I'm going to move the quill down. I'm going to put my bit in position, get it more or less lined up. I'm going to tighten my quill lock. Everything's in place. doesn't hurt to check and recheck before you commit to a position. Now, we get our table lined up with the edge of our work. And I have this little, this little guy here. Now in this case, what I'll probably do is I'll take another block and I'll snug it against here just so I have something to reference to. But essentially, you have a stop here and uh, It'll work just fine for now. So, unlock the quill. Get our quill brought up. I can pretty much drill that same hole again and again and again, the same position, and pretty much within the accuracy. Of your drill between whatever tolerance you have, whatever runnage you have from your quill through your chuck all the way down to the end of your bit. It's pretty much the tolerance we're working with. So, two holes pretty much exactly where they're supposed to be with respect to the edges with this handy dandy drill press tape. All right. One last thing I think I need to show you on this drill press is um, something quite simple really, but it's very, very good when you've got to do a lot of work and you've got a lot of shavings to deal with. So, essentially just a magnetic dial indicator holder. And what I've done is I've just taken a piece of uh, thick gauge wire, heavy gauge wire, made it into a little loop here, a series of loops. 
And we can mount that right on our column. And now you can imagine here a vacuum cleaner attachment of some kind. Wow, it is really cold out because my nose is running. Vacuum cleaner attachment going through here, and you can pretty much position this where you want to. Depending on how far up and down your table is, it's pretty easy to adjust up and down, side to side. You get your vacuum cleaner attachment exactly where you need it. For all those uh, really dusty, messy jobs that you're going to be doing. Folks, that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. By all means, if you have any questions uh, about what we've done here today, feel free to uh, send me an email or just uh, reach out to me, and uh, I'll do my best to answer whatever questions you might have. Thank you.